Today we're going to be talking about how to use the picture of a polar curve sketched on a Cartesian coordinate system to draw a picture of the same polar curve but on polar axes. So in this particular problem we've been given this curve here which I've sketched in green and it's been sketched on a Cartesian coordinate system and we've been told that instead of x and y axes we have axes for theta and r but either way the graph is along a Cartesian coordinate system here, and we need to take the information from this graph and translate it so that we can graph this same curve on a polar coordinate system and see what it looks like. So an exercise like this is really just about identifying points along the curve that you've been given so that you can translate them onto the polar coordinate system. So obviously if we look at the graph we have here, we notice that we have the point here zero Two. So what that means is the angle theta is zero and we're out a distance of two from the origin of the polar coordinate system. We also have this point here, which tells us that when the angle is pi over two, we're out a distance of zero from the origin. We have this point here, which is supposed to be at pi negative two, which means that at an angle pi, we're out a distance of negative two from the origin. And we have this point here, same thing, you get the idea, and this point here, which is supposed to be at two pi two. So we just need to translate these points onto the polar coordinate system and then connect them. So first thing you wanna do, look at this graph, identify points, Maybe you even want to label them like this, 2 comma 2 pi. In polar coordinates, r is always first, and then theta, r theta. So we have r value of 2 and theta value of 2 pi. So maybe you want to label them that way. But either way, we're going to go ahead and translate them onto our polar coordinate system. So what this tells us is that this first point here, the angle is 0. Remember that this is our angle 0 here along this axis. So at the angle zero, we're out a distance of two from the origin. At the angle zero here, we're out a distance of two. So let's go ahead and call this here. Let's call this two. We're out a distance of two from the origin, so we're right here. Okay, now our graph comes up a little bit and then goes down until it intersects this point here, which is the angle pi over two out a distance from the origin of zero because the value of r here is zero, the angle is pi over two. So on our polar coordinate system, this is the angle zero here, this is the angle pi over two, this is pi, this is three pi over two, and then this is coming back to two pi as well. So we go around like that with the angle. So at pi over two, the angle pi over two, we're at a distance of zero from the origin. So that means that we have this next point here and we wanna go ahead and connect them. So what this means is that as we move from this point here where we're out a distance from the origin of two and we move toward the angle pi over two toward this axis here, we're gonna move out from the origin a little bit. We're gonna go farther away from the origin or farther away from this axis, right? This distance here becomes greater. As we move out a little bit from the origin, we're gonna curl back and come toward the origin until we hit this point. So we're gonna move out from the origin a little bit, and then as we move toward pi over two, we're gonna come back and curl in until we hit this point here. Now from this point, we're moving from the angle pi over two to pi, right? That's our next interval. So pi over two to pi, we're moving from this angle here down toward this angle. Well, when we get to the angle pi, we notice that we're out a distance of negative two from the origin. So the angle pi is literally along this axis in this direction. If we were out a distance of positive two, we'd be over here because we'd be going toward this direction of pi here. But because it's negative two, along this angle we start from the origin and we move backwards from that angle in this direction until we go a distance of two. So we end up back at this point again, so we know that from the point we're at now, right here at the origin, on this interval here, we're gonna end up back at this point. We're gonna curl back toward this point. And what we can see is that as we do that, we go out a little bit farther than two, right? This is two right here. And we're gonna have this dip down here where we go out farther than two and then curl back toward it. So that's the same symmetrical shape that we had before where we come out a little bit farther 
and then go back until we hit that point to this point right here. Now, as we move from the angle pi to three pi over two, we're gonna come back to a distance out from the origin of zero. So we're moving from the angle pi here to three pi over two. At pi, we were a distance of negative two, so we were out this way. We're moving to three pi over two, and we're gonna come back to the origin. So if we just continue our path, as we move toward three pi over two, we're gonna curl back toward the origin. So this section is gonna look like this. We're gonna come back toward the origin. Now we're back at the origin and here from three pi over two to two pi, we're gonna go out again to a distance of two. So as we move from three pi over two out to two pi, we're gonna move back out to a distance of two. At the angle two pi, this is the positive distance of two where we wanna be. So we're gonna move back in this direction here, out a distance of two until we hit that point. And this is the same graph of the polar curve, but just translated onto the polar coordinate system. So that's how you use the polar curve plotted on a Cartesian coordinate system to visualize and translate the curve onto a polar coordinate system. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.